So the punya puja is to enliven in the house. The space in the house should become alive. And it has now been found it also kills certain types of bacteria in the air and also on the surfaces. This is a very important part of, uh, you know, warding off infections and things like that. In Indian culture, there is a whole attention to the shape and size of the room in which you live, because the shape and size of the room in some way, if it is not heavily ventilated, when I say heavily ventilated, from both sides two walls are open and it's happening, then it feels almost like outdoor, that's different. Most homes are not made this way. So different shapes and sizes kind of create different kinds of energy structures. These energy structures can, if they become very strong, can determ determine your psychological and emotional state, which either can be conducive or can become an impediment in who you want to be. So, certain substances like sandal in India, there is something called as samrani, which is a very powerful thing which is used even when people are ill. First thing they do is this, and it has now been found it also kills certain types of bacteria in the air and also on the surfaces. So especially if there is a sick person in the house, some running everywhere. This has a powerful impact on the atmosphere. It is not necessarily a fragrance, it is a different kind of thing that it clarifies the air, it just makes the atmosphere feel more lively. Fundamentally, it… whatever structures that they are there, it will make indoor like outdoor. Just mild samrani in the house will make it feel like Though you're indoors, the feeling is of out outdoors because it's an un unstructured space. Especially if death happens in the family, Samrani is burnt for up to eleven to twelve days because they want to clear that air completely. Incense has a certain impact, but don't overdo it. One can use it in a sensible manner, but these days incense is being made with chemical stuff. Best you don't burn those things. It's very, very important before you have enough chemical thing happening on the street, in the industry, in the factory floor that you may be working, wherever there's enough chemicals floating around. At least within your house, do not burn chemically made incense because I think that is almost seventy percent or eighty percent of what's available in the market today is chemical. You must take it out before you burn it. It's uh, very, very important because within the closed enclosures, if you burn chemicals, well, the negative impact of that is very, very big. So it must be natural resin or certain other oils, essential oils and things which can make a difference. Uh, a mild difference, if you need that kind of a difference. It… it helps, definitely. So generally in the yogic culture, in the yogic sciences, we look at life as a composition of five basic elements – earth, fire, water, wind and space. In this, fire is a very important aspect of uh, making this life so fire is seen as a significant element which makes life happen. It's not the only thing, all the five are important. But when it comes to warding of things, fire is always very important. So this is part of it every day in your life, 
you must light an oil lamp and stay in its presence for a period of time because it'll ward off many things, it'll cleanse many things for your system. This is a very important part of, uh, you know, warding off infections and things like that. If it is airborne, especially if it's airborne, having fire around you will help. There must be some kind of a lamp burning around you somewhere close by. This will do wonders to you. Please experiment and see. If you sleep, if you can find a safe place in your room where a small oil lamp is burning, you will see it'll make a lot of difference for you. Just being in the presence of that fire makes a big difference. The science of yoga clearly establishes this and we know this by our experience. By having a small piece of fire in the form of a lamp burning around you, you will see especially when you're physically not well, it is very, very important to have that. You know what's punya? What is referred to as punya and papa? Unfortunately, these things are badly misinterpreted over a period of time. Punya papa means those type of actions, actions which take you down, a actions which, you know, increase the effervescence of life within you or actions which move you towards the inertia of life. So the punya puja is to end live in the house, the space in the house should become alive. If you have lived in such a way in your home, that every moment you're on with love and light within you, then no punya puja would be needed. But today you have built homes which are so large, it's very difficult to make them alive just by living. If you just had a one-room house, and you lived in great sense of love and joy, you can easily keep it very alive. But today your house has ten, fifteen enclosures. It's very difficult for any human being to keep it alive. Once in a way, if you do, do not live in it, slowly if you enter certain parts of your home, you will see it feels like a coffin. The Punya Puja, once in a way, at least once a year, would light it up. That is, you have the space around you alive and it supports you. So Punya Puja is a way of consecrating your home, entire home, every part of it, so that there is some sense of aliveness and energy. <laughs>